One Shea Bear 1000 here. We tried to get this thing running yesterday and it wouldn't start. It fired but wouldn't start. So I think what we should check is the blade. Okay guys, I have a couple of suspicions. I thought I'd check this blade for a reason. Now, you need three things to make an engine run. You need fuel, you need uh, spark, and you need compression. I know, I know, you need air. Let's skip that. We we all know air, okay? Now, that's for, you know, gasoline engine. Of course, diesel's not going to have spark. Uh, I'm looking for any nicks or any kind of bend on this blade. Now, I'm not seeing any, but I do have a suspicion what could be wrong with this thing. But the first thing we're going to check after this... So we're going to check compression. Now these small engines, they'll run on low compression. They just won't have any power. You try to do anything with them, they'll stall out. This thing, it's firing, but it's not, it, it won't, you know, just catch and, and take off and run. Um, I don't see any bad bends in this. Right, right here, there's a nick right here. I can feel it. I can't feel anything on the other two, but on this one, there's a nick. It's kind of bent out a little bit, and I can feel it. Could be natural, but that could be a reason there that this won't start. But... If I don't do this, I know people are going to say you should always check the compression first. That's true. So what we're going to do is I've got a compression tester over here. And we're going to check the compression on this thing. And we're going to see how much compression it has. If it's got low compression, it should still run. But see, there, you know, I was thinking, well, I even said it yesterday. I think, I think it's not getting the right fuel. I... I don't agree with that. Um, I thought that, but now I don't because uh, even if your carburetor's clogged up, you know, your fuel line's clogged up, even if you're out of gas, if you pour fuel into that carburetor or up here, which we did, down into the cylinder, it should fire up and run for, you know, a second anyway. It should boom, at least do that. This is not doing that. However, it is firing. But it's not really like starting up. Okay. Um, that can be due to compression. Okay. If we don't have any compression, there's several different things it could be. It could be a leaky head, clear down to a hole in the piston. Uh, it could be a valve stuck open. It could be a bent valve. You know. But... I'm thinking if, if I had a, a valve stuck open or a bent valve, which will make it stick open because it can't it can't close all the way, it would either backfire through the muffler or backfire through the carburetor. Uh, we're not getting that. We're not getting any backfiring. So I'm thinking it may be out of time. There's no distributor on these, but they are in time. But first... Let's check the compression. Okay, so I've got a screwdriver on the throttle. I want wide open throttle. And we're going to watch our gauge here. And I'm just going to give it a couple pulls. Alright. Let's see what we're reading. Seems a little low. It's got about 55... 52. I think that's enough compression to start this thing. But we'll see. Okay, so 
Let's get this thing out of here. Um, we're going to spin this around. And I want to get in. Whoops. I want to get into the flywheel. Alright. I want to check this before I pull the head. And the flywheel is in here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this whole cover off. There's a couple, there's uh, three bolts up here holding it on, three head bolts. There should be a couple down here. There's one here on the side, another one over here on this side, and a little screw right here. So I'm going to speed you up. I'm going to take him out and we're going to take this off here and then we'll move on to the next step. I got them bolts out. I must be missing one somewhere. Because it does not want to move. Okay. Let me investigate this more. Forgot to hit record. Had all the bolts out. It was just stuck. So. We're going to take this off. Inside of here. Right inside of here, that little cup. Whoa. Uh, excuse me. There is a nut. So I'm going to get my my socket and my little impact, and we're going to take this off. And I'm going to flip it up on the side, or kind of on the side. I don't want to go all the way over on that side. Fill the exhaust up with oil. And we're going to look at something inside here. Inside of here, there's a shear key, not a shear pin. You know, a lot of guys call it different, even professionals. They'll call them shear pins. They're not a pin. A pin goes in a round hole. Then they'll call cotter pins cotter keys. Uh, they're not cotter keys, you know. It's like, it might be your shear pin or your cotter key. You got that backwards, okay? So... Because there's a keyway in here, that's why it's called a key. It's actually called a Woodruff key. My suspicion is they may have hit something with this thing, a stump. Just because it's not dinged up real bad doesn't mean they didn't hit something soft but hard like a like a tree root. And if that belt is really tight, which it needs a new belt, if your belt is really tight and it stops the engine, this flywheel wants to keep turning. They put that in there for a reason, for that reason, so you don't do, you know, big time engine damage like bend a crank or break a crank or whatever. So, this is my suspicion up in here. So, let me get my socket and we're going to pull this off here and I'll, we'll uh, take a good look at it together. Okay, guys, I got this little guy here. We're going to try to take this off. This is a five or three quarter. So let's try to there it is all right now need a new end on that let's pull this off let's check this key i'll show you that key here in just a second all right kind of hard to see but I think that may be the issue I'm gonna pull this I'm gonna pull this off here I'll show you how I do that it's real simple I know you're not supposed to do that but it doesn't hurt anything let's go ahead we're gonna pop this off of here 
Now let me go get a let me get a hammer and a soft pry, or a hammer and a pry bar. Now I'm gonna pry out on this. I just got a big screwdriver. It shouldn't take much, and I'm just gonna tap that just like that. Now you didn't hurt the thread. You didn't hurt anything. Now, we're going to take this key out, we're going to take it in the house, inspect it. It should have ran, even though I think it may have a little damage, it should have ran. But, I want to take this out and we'll take it in the house and look at it real close. I'm probably still going to go get another one. We'll see what this one looks like though. See, this one is not technically, it's not even a Woodruff key. Woodruff key is kind of like half moon shaped. Okay, I can already see, but let's get you in the house. I gotta cool down anyway. All right guys, so here's my little key. And there's some point to this thing maybe being a little bent, okay? There's the end of it, the outside end. Now, if you look right there, come on, focus. See that line? That looks like that may have tried to shear off. Now, usually if they're only this bad, they will run, but they won't run great. Okay, so... Yeah, there's that. I think that may be the problem. But, like I said, most of the time you'll see these things really actually sheared off. It'll come out in two pieces. This, that's not the case with this one. So, what we're going to do, Monkey's not here, so I can't go get a shear key yet. So, in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to go outside. Let's go ahead and yank that head off of there. And see if we see any issues. You know, maybe a bent valve. Uh, I really don't think that's a problem. Could be a compression ring broke. But let's pull the head off and see what's going on inside there. Now one real short one goes here. And then we know where the other ones go. So... Alright, pull this off, Let's see what we got here, I see some carbon, I don't know what's going on with this head right here, but Hmm. Well, not positive. That head may have been off there. I don't know. I'll have to get a new gasket. Sometimes you can reuse these. But what I'm going to do, I'm just going to turn this over. I'll take this belt off here. But anyway, one valve coming up. There is some carbon under there. The exhaust valve looks nice and, well, I won't say clean, it's carbon, but I don't see anything major. But the intake valve does look a little suspicious to me. Uh, it may have just enough carbon. Shoot. Alright. May have just enough carbon buildup to keep it open, but you would think it would have backfired through the carburetor.
all right I'm gonna get a wire brush I'm not gonna bore you with that I'm just gonna clean this up I'll try to take a head gasket off there I'm gonna need to get another head gasket yeah that's just gasket material I'll clean this up and I'll be back with you once I get it cleaned up and we get a woodruff key in it and we'll see what happens after that uh, I don't see I don't see a hole in the piston I don't see any cracks in that piston what I do see right here that may or may not have been underneath that valve that is all carbon that was underneath that valve that could have been the problem uh, I'm gonna look at it a little closer like I said I'm not going to bore you with cleaning this up there's no excessive uh, wear on the cylinders I can actually still see a little bit of cross hatching I see a little bit of scoring nothing major nothing that wouldn't cause it to run or that would cause it not to run whatever uh, let me get it cleaned up Alright, let's blow this off. Got the head nice and clean. I know there's a little bit of carbon up there. It's not going to hurt nothing, guys. This is not a 500 horsepower sports car, race car, or the space shuttle. It's an edger. 3.8 horsepower edger. So I am going to put a new gasket, head gasket on it. It's not a big deal. I probably could use the old one. Something like this. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't know, I think I, I'm thinking I was 11 or 12-ish. I wasn't a teenager yet, but it was right before there. So let's just say I, don't know, I was 12. All right. I was roaming around the junkyard one day. Dad come in with a load of scrap. He said, what you doing, Mark? I said, oh, I'm just looking for something to build. He said, well, that's good because I think I've got just the thing for you. He unloaded a lawnmower. And uh, he said, that thing don't run. You want to mess with it? And I'm like, sure. So I was pulling on it. Felt like it, 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 there was nothing there. I said, Dad, if it feels like there's nothing there, he said, it's probably got stuck valve. There's no compression. I said, all right. So I pulled the head off of it. Sure enough, one of the valves was stuck. So I tapped it, turned it. It opened and then, you know, stayed open. So I kept doing that, kept hitting it with oil and tapping it. Finally, it freed up and it would open and close. Well, I didn't have a head gasket put on and that head gasket was crap <laughs> so I actually used some orange RTV on that thing and I put it together and that thing ran and I remember it running when I was 15 or 16 I was using it to cut the grass so you know it's not a big deal you can see it was leaking around there a little bit you can see some black puffs of you know soot but I mean we had a big yard. We had almost an acre of grass to cut. So, um, but I am going to put a new head gasket on it. I, like I said, I could probably get by using the old one, just tighten it down real good. But since I'm going to go get a Woodruff key, I'm, uh, I'll go ahead and pick up a gasket for it. I don't think the key was the problem. I think it may have hit something at one time, but it didn't do enough to... I mean, that thing still should have ran, even if not running good. I've seen them, like, halfway sheared, and they still run, but they run rough and no power and stuff like that. But that carbon I took out of there, I think that may have been holding that valve open just enough. Now, why it wasn't popping back through the carburetor, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't enough to get it to pop back through the carb. But, 
So, yeah, um, what we'll do is we'll throw a head gasket on there. New Woodruff key. I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, how do you know which one it was? Well, I'm pretty sure it wasn't that Woodruff key. I'm pretty sure it was carbon on this. Uh, and then we'll check the compression again and see if it came up from the 52 we had before. So hang tight, guys. It's going to be a little bit for me, but for you guys, it'll just be a second. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, something I wanted to show you real quick. When these valves are closed, put your thumb on there and try to turn them. You should not be able to turn them. As you can see, we can't. I got us a new head gasket. It was 17 bucks, but it might end up costing us a lot more because as we was backing out, Monkey ran into a customer's lawnmower, a riding tractor. So, uh, crinkled the hood up and I think maybe bent the spindle, I don't know. But, anyway, I got to really get moving on this thing because it's going to rain. It's going to storm again. Alright, so let me grab my bolts. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to speed you up through this because i got to really get this, get this done. So I can remember how this went. All right. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch Fuel line's bad. I gotta see if I got a fuel line. Watch your blue eyes fade to gray As you fade away As you fade away Okay guys, sorry about that. My battery went dead. So I changed the battery and when it goes dead while you're recording, it wants you to hit the recovery button. Sometimes when you do that, it wipes out the whole card. So I went ahead and imported what I had. I went ahead and put it on my computer just in case. I tried a different card, but it won't let it only it's stuck on that screen until you use that card. So if that happens and you lose your card, you're screwed. Alright. So I'm gonna speed you up through this. Because this is kinda I got a fuel leak there. This is kinda kind of fiddly so looks like a bowl gasket it's <laughs> just a little drip all right let's do this and I'll speed you up Love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy. Look in the mirror if he is no friend to me. It's not working now, maybe it's the chemistry. It's time to break up so I can make a better me. Better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. Okay guys, so I shut you off to uh, get a drink and I forgot to turn you back on. Anyway, I got this all back together. Now we're going to get it down off of here. And we're going to see if it'll start. Looks like I got some work to do on that. Should have did it while it was apart, but I don't have to take this whole thing off to get to that rope. I can just take these screws off around here. Just needs wrapped one more time. So let me get this down off here. Let's see what happens. Alright, let's put our spark plug in. I'm give it a choke. It's got throttle. Uh, yeah, there's no primer bulb on this, so let's see. Come on. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to fix this first. Let's see. Not getting any fuel. I'm 
I'm not saying it don't have carburetor issues, but it should. When you pour gas in there, it should start and run for a second anyway. There it goes. Okay, let me do some checking. It's already running longer than it did yesterday. Okay, I checked the compression again. It's lower. It's like 42. Weird. I'd like to say it around 90 for it to run good, usable. Oh boy. Hate Shecumsies. Okay guys, I got a fire. It does have a slight fuel issue, but the governor is not, the governor's kind of stuck. If I open it with my fingers, it'll run. Uh, so it's just kind of like wanting to start on idle all the time. So I'll show you what it's doing. doing that come on See, this is not doing anything. So, let me take another look at this, but I think tomorrow we'll get the carburetor straightened out. May not even be much wrong with it. Um, it's responded to when I, when I adjust that bottom, the uh, high speed jet, it is responding, but it just, it's only running half choke too. So I don't know, um, I did run another compression test, that second one I ran, not the first one, but the one I did off camera, uh, I didn't have a throttle wide open. So I did run another compression test and it, uh, with the throttle wide open and it's about 99. So anyway, let me do some more checking on this and I'll be right back with you. Okay, let's try this again. The uh, that little rod, the governor rod that goes from the governor arm to the uh, um, throttle was bent. Let's see what happens.
All right, still only running on one click of the choke, but that's not a big deal. Um, this thing is also a trimmer, so and it can trim. So, I'm going to start this up and we're going to take it over here and see if it will trim those. Maybe. <laughs> Spun the belt off of it. I know it's going to need a new belt, so... Cool. So, I think once I get the carburetor straightened out, I think it's going to be going to be all right. The engine sounds great. Let's try to start it again. First, I'm going to tighten this spark plug up. I'll start it again. Maybe put the pull rope on, see if it'll start with the pull rope. We'll see what happens from there. Okay. Well, do some work on the carburetor tomorrow. And then, uh, and we'll see what happens. Hang tight, guys. I'm gonna put the pull rope back on. Okay. Good to go. Now that we know it's a fuel issue, tomorrow it'll be carburetor time. Because that was with the choke closed. Uh, so, this thing. Oh, there it is. Alright, so. It does run. It's a good run, a little engine, as a matter of fact. It's a fairly decent carburetor on that. But those years this was built, I'm thinking around the time they were about ready to file, Tecumseh was about ready to file for bankruptcy, and they just pretty much put out crap. So, but I think this carburetor is rebuildable, um, but I don't think I'm going to have to. I think I'm just going to clean it out, take the part clean out. We'll do that tomorrow. And I think that's going to take care of our issue, and this will be ready to work. Uh... I'll have to get a new belt, but that's not a big deal. So, all right, guys, let me get my tools picked up. I'll be back with you. Okay, guys, so final thoughts on that. Do I think any of those, do I think that carbon caused any issue? Do I think the uh, shear pin caused any issue? I don't think it was either one of them. Um, because I believe that big hunk of carbon that came out, I believe... Had I noticed that um, governor rod bent, I think it would have started and blew that piece of carbon out of there. 
but at least you know that doubts out of my mind now now I know there's nothing wrong with that um, it's got good compression now it's got 98 pound now so um, I think the main reason was that damn I mean I looked at it and when I opened the I opened the butterfly up on, on the carburetor you know I just stuck a little screwdriver in there the carburetor opened up I didn't notice the governor wasn't moving and that's why it wasn't moving because when it was bent like that it was actually pushing the governor back to like where it would be idling and what it does is when you start them they're wide open okay and then the governor will come back and bring it back to wherever you have your throttle set like to idle to bring it back to idle all the way to idle um, this was backwards it being bent like it was was pushing the arm back to idle the governor couldn't work I think that was the main issue ah you know who to thunk right <laughs> rookie mistake but it happens um, so that's why I'm telling you about it so you know make sure you check that um, I do believe the first compression issue at 52 pound I think it would have started on that and blew that carbon out of there I really do think it would have blew out because it kind of fell off in my hand I showed it to you uh, I don't think that because it wasn't like it was jammed in there so I think that once it would have fired real good I think it would have blew that out the shear pin I did put a new one in but when I got to looking at it I was like man I compared it to the new one that's why I didn't even show you there really wasn't much difference so here's the old one I'm gonna save it because you know you never know um, wasn't very much like I said it was like 17 for the gasket it was $21 and something with tax in this so providing we don't have to buy a brand new hood for somebody but you know if we do we do but I guess he's one of the customers that he just he said no man this guy bitches about everything but he told him he said you know he, he told him to move it when he dropped it off he said don't leave that in the middle of the parking lot someone will hit it that's what happened yeah granted monkey should have been been looking better um, don't rely on them backup beepers because they did beep as soon as she hit it they started beeping but she was backing up kind of fast um, just always look around so anyway accidents happen it happens I backed into things before myself but anyway it's running so maybe tomorrow we'll do the carburetor we'll take it apart clean it I'll get some carburetor cleaner and we'll spray it down uh, I might soak it I, I do have a little bit of that uh, I think it's gunk carburetor cleaner in a gallon can may let it soak in there for a few, few hours we'll see but I think that's that's the rest of the issue it did stop leaking up there at the bowl because I figure once he got to it it you know sealed itself they do that sometimes just a, it's just a rubber it's not really an o-ring because it's more like square <laughs> but they still call them o-rings just a rubber seal so anyway it does run my thoughts on it yeah I think it'll do what I needed to do and that's fine and it'll be fine because uh, you know all, really all we need to do is now is a belt maybe sharpen that blade up a little bit I don't know we'll see but anyway guys until the next one Shea Bear the Myth Man Legend Golf now y'all be safe have a good one bye bye and take care everyone